What's up everybody, my name is Sarah. Thank you guys so much for joining me yet again for another video. I hope you are all having a spectacular day. And I'm sitting here in front of my computer with you today to share yet another Zwift tip, trick, hack, guide, setup, thing, but this time including Trainer Road. So in this video, I want to show you how to use Zwift and Trainer Road simultaneously in the same ride so that you can get the most bang for your buck out of both of your subscription programs. Now you might be watching this video and you assembled upon this wondering why you would want to do this. Maybe you only have Zwift at the moment and you're pondering. Maybe you want a Trainer Road subscription, but you're not sure you'll get the value out of it, or you're a Trainer Road subscriber and you don't know if Zwift's going to be worthwhile, if it's going to take away from what you're doing, or maybe you have both, but you're not getting the value out of both and you're trying to figure out how to solve that problem. Hopefully I can answer that question for you guys in this video. So just to give a brief overview for those people who might not have one platform or the other, let's just kind of talk about some of the basics in terms of Zwift and Trainer Road. They are not really competitors, so to speak. They are both online training platforms, but they do have two substantially different targets and audiences in mind with their platforms, and that's why having both of them can actually reap a lot of value for a single rider. So Trainer Road is more of a serious cyclist's protocol. Whether you're beginner all the way to elite, it doesn't matter your level, but it's intended for those people who are looking to get faster, to get stronger, and it's basically the next best thing to having a coach. It has hundreds, actually probably thousands, of uh, workouts that are scientifically backed and cultivated by coaches and trainers that are very serious and passionate and educated in the sport of cycling. It has a number of prefabricated plans that are customizable to different volume levels, as well as different uh, focuses like off-road, road cycling, triathlon, things to that effect. You can select some of those prefabricated plans and recently they have a create a plan option as well to increase more customizability. But the focus of the program is not really the online training per se, but it's to give you access to all of these different coach uh, cultivated plans without actually having to pay for a coach. At $189 a year, uh, it's still a lot of value. I actually am still locked into the $99 a year plan from several years ago, but at any price point, there is a lot of value considering you can pay $189 a month for coaching that gives you similar quality plans with maybe just a less personal one-on-one -on -one feedback. But their intention is to be the one-stop shop. I think eventually creating a tr fitness tracker, uh, training tracker that's similar to something like Training Peaks or uh, Today's Plan. They're, I know that they're working on expanding to swim and run so that they can really be the one-stop shop. But at the moment, for cycling, it gives you everything that you need except for the graphical user interface. It gets a little bit dull. It's a simple graph with your power readouts. Uh, it's very keep it simple, stupid type of thing. It will control your, your uh, turbo trainer or your indoor trainer against the uh, prescribed workout intensity. Uh, you will basically follow your little graph along. You can maybe watch TV in the background, listen to music, but it gets a little bit dull to work, look at. Q Zwift. Swift is a very gamified, immersive, graphically intensive experience for Zwift. It has changed the game for indoor training by trying to take as much of the outside world into the inside of your home as possible, which is great for people who are not even serious cyclists that just want to get fit and want to do so conveniently in the privacy of their own home and not worry about the dangers of traffic or not having anywhere to ride, especially in metropolitan areas. But for serious cyclists, it gives you something prettier to look at. It also gives you this sense of um, completion where you have reward system, you've got experience points so you can level up and you can unlock different customizability in the game. Uh, you've got drops that you can buy new bikes with, you've got races, you've got group rides, it has a ton of value. But when it comes to training, structured training, it's okay. They have gotten a lot better. There are some pretty good workouts. Uh, more and more programs and coach guided workouts are making their way into the, the structured workout protocol, but it's not perfect. It's not really for your more serious cyclists. They're more of something that you cherry pick for a good workout, but the plans and the structured workouts do leave a lot to be desired once you get past that maybe beginner to intermediate phase. 
but that's okay because Zwift really wants to make cycling accessible for everybody. It's never going to be, or at least not in the foreseeable future, the one-stop shop for the serious cyclist because as soon as they go down that path, they know that they're going to turn off a lot of their entry level or uh, non-serious cyclists by making this extremely complicated or uh, exclusionary to them. So you can see how both programs have their benefits, but being able to put them together would make an absolute powerhouse for the serious cyclist to be able to use all the benefits of Trainer Road while still having that reward system, that great graphical user interface, and those uh, other options that aren't offered in Trainer Road in Zwift. So let's get right into getting it set up after I've done my probably too long of an introduction. And let's talk about what you need first. So to do this, first and foremost, you are gonna need a computer. Whether it's a PC or a Mac, notebook or desktop, it has to be a computer. Currently, there is no capability to run these programs uh, simultaneously on something like an Apple TV, standard mobile device via a tablet or a, uh, a cell phone. It's just, you don't have that capability. I think that people can mod devices to potentially do something like this, but out of the box, for simplicity's sake, really you need a computer. You also are gonna need a computer that has a reasonable a, a bit of processing and graphical power. If you're already running Zwift, you probably have what you need, but uh, refer to the Zwift or Trainer Road rep, uh, website for their specific minimum requirements of a PC or a Mac. But Cliff's Notes version is you're probably gonna need something capable of running entry level games. So if you're looking at a notebook, you're not gonna spend any less than 500 bucks in the PC market. Probably somewhere around the $700 range is a really good sweet spot. Get you running in 1080 with nice graphics on Zwift, give you the processing power you need. Uh, eight gigabytes of RAM probably will cut it. 16 gigs is probably perfect. A uh, solid state drive is ideal, not required, but it helps move things a little bit more quickly and more smoothly. Um, but do a little bit of research on your own. But if you're already running Zwift and you're running Zwift well, to add in Trainer Road really isn't going to take a ton extra. So as long as you're not at the, uh, the very razor's edge of your computer's performance, you should be able to add in Trainer Road uh, no problem. If you're going the other way, Trainer Road to Zwift, make sure that you have the graphical capacity to do that. Uh, a gaming level graphics card for 1080 is really not particularly expensive and probably included in a lot of those mid-range uh, PC markets and your MacBook Pros for sure, and probably some of your MacBook Air is gonna have uh, that type of capacity. So once you have that, the other thing you're going to need is at least one of these. This is an Ant Plus dongle, really tiny, just a little USB stick. You may already have one of these, but you are going to need at least one, and I'm going to recommend two, and I'll explain why that is in a second. But realistically, you're gonna need one because each program needs to connect to the devices as if it's its own receiver. So if you have, if you have Zwift open and it's running in Ant Plus, it's going to take the Ant Plus uh, communication over and then if you open up Trainer Road, it's only going to be able to use Bluetooth. So if you have one Ant Plus dongle, you're going to need to run Bluetooth on one program and Ant Plus on the other. My recommendation is to get yourself a second and I recommend getting one of these kits. It comes with the Ant Plus dongle as well as an extension cord. The reason for that is because uh, the Ant Plus sensors are uh, specifically designed with a shorter broadcast range, shorter than Ant Plus is capable of, so that you don't have interference between, let's say you're setting up at a race or a group ride. You've got all these bikes with all these Ant Plus devices that are on there and then trying to find your own by the uh, unique identifier is almost impossible. So they try to keep that locus of the signal really tight, so a couple of feet. So if you can't keep your computer or laptop within a couple feet of your sensors, I recommend getting one of these. It's about 15 bucks. It's really usually only a couple dollars more than the sensor itself. It comes with probably a six foot extension cable and the dongle itself. And what I do, because my computer's across the room from my setup, is I just plug in the, the USB extension cords, just kind of put them over the floor, set them down near my bike. And then when I'm done, I roll them up and put them away. Now, Let's talk about Ant Plus for a minute and why I'm recommending two Ant Plus uh, dongles. I personally prefer Ant Plus. I'm probably gonna do a video in the next week or two about Ant Plus versus Bluetooth, the pros and cons of both, and uh, why you might wanna choose one over the other. But one of the key assets to Ant Plus, other than being a more mature protocol, is that it is, um, it's more open. So if you have an Ant Plus device, let's say your Ant Plus heart rate monitor, 
You can connect that to your head unit on your bicycle, you can connect it to your exercise watch, maybe a Garmin or Polar or uh, Suntu, um, or you can, and you can connect it to Zwift, you can connect it to somebody else monitoring it on a, a different computer. The point is that there's really no limit to the number of devices as receivers that you can connect to. With Bluetooth, it's basically one transmitter and one receiver. There are exceptions to that in the consumer market with things like headphones that have opened up the capacity to broadcast an additional signal. But when it comes to these exercise devices, if you have a Bluetooth only heart rate monitor, it is only capable of connecting to one receiver. So if you're connected to something like Zwift, you're no longer gonna be able to connect to your, uh, your, your head unit, your Garmin or your Wahoo on your bike because that signal is already being hijacked or controlled by another system. Now, you might be asking why you need two AMP Plus receivers for one device being your computer. You need to treat each program like its own receiver. So when I open up Trainer Road, it is gonna take this, this dongle here and it's gonna take exclusive control over that to make sure that there are no conflicts. At which point you'll open up Zwift and Zwift won't even know that there's an Ant Plus dongle attached, which is why you need two. Now for $30 for the investment, these things last forever. The One of these things here, I've had this one for I think seven or eight years. So they last forever as long as you don't like break them or smash them or anything like that there really isn't much to them they're cheap they are replaceable but for 30 bucks for two extension cords and two amp plus dongles is a one-time investment over trying to deal with mixing bluetooth and amp plus it's just my recommendation but i'm hoping to have another video that goes more into detail on that so i don't have to talk about that here i'm going to show you how to, sh to set this up both ways i'm going to show you how to set up something that might be a little bit more standard which is the single amp plus dongle and the bluetooth connection which many of you might be ready to run right now if you're already using amp plus and your computer is already capable of bluetooth you're ready to roll and then after that i will show you how to use the combination of the two where it gives you a couple days maybe you want to order one of these two-day shipping on amazon prime or what have you uh, and then you can kind of set it up and it will probably be a more stable connection for you as well there seems to be a little bit less traffic on the amp plus because it is specific to exercise devices whereas bluetooth is kind of competing with things like speakers headphones cell phones you know, I live in an apartment, there's people below me that also have uh, their own Bluetooth devices that are kind of always searching and trying to pair. So now that you know what you need, you need your computer and you need at least one, if not two AMP Plus dongles, let's get into how to set them up, starting with Bluetooth. Okay, so one key setting that you're gonna need to make sure you have in place for either one of the connection methods that you use is ensuring that your display settings are properly set up. So under your settings here, we're just in the menu in a ride here, under your screen mode you'll see you have full screen and windowed options. Full screen is probably the most uh, visually appealing as it removes along the top, it's going to remove this, uh, this control bar here. But windowed mode is what you're going to need to be able to run two programs at once. And the reason for that is because in full screen mode, Zwift has two states. Swift is either front row center and it's the only thing open and it's taking up the whole screen, full screen mode, or it's completely minimized. And in that case, you cannot actually layer things on top of Zwift as you would another program in Windows, which is why you want to put it in windowed mode. So basically the premise behind that is to be able to take another program in windowed mode and you can see I have Google opened up on top of Zwift. Now this isn't specifically for using Google, but in full screen mode you can't do this. You would have to minimize your Zwift uh, program to be able to open up something else. In windowed mode you can now open up other uh, programs, other boxes, things like that on top of Zwift, which which is going to be what we need to use Trainer Road as an overlay on top of Zwift. So with Zwift all set up to run in windowed mode, uh, we're ready to basically get ourselves paired up. So when you open up Zwift, you'll get a pairing screen much like this. I've gone ahead and just woken up all my devices here really quickly. And you'll see that's connecting uh, to my trainer as a power source with my heart rate, uh, cadence from my power meter, and then my controllable trainer. The only key thing you need to remember here is that if you're gonna run both at the same time is to turn your controllable trainer off. You do not want Zwift controlling your trainer. You don't want it feeding an incline or any type of resistance. You want to allow trainer road to either do that via erg mode or if you're not going to use erg mode, you do not want that kind of incline feedback uh, interrupting your workout. So make sure that that's grayed out or turned off. It'll probably connect automatically. 
just make sure that Zwift is not controlling your trainer. So once you have that set up, you're ready to ride. You can just go ahead and enter your ride, uh, pick any type of terrain that's appropriate for you and we'll go ahead and minimize this and then we will open up Trainer Road. With Trainer Road open, if you have a plan or workout plan, do whatever you want to do there, but we're just gonna pick a workout and cherry pick one for the sake of this video. We'll go ahead and pick Abbott here. It's already set to inside. We'll hit load workout and you can see I have down here in this lower left hand corner, I have one device paired and it's paired via Bluetooth and that is my H2 trainer. Uh, it's all ready to go. Now, if I was wearing a heart rate monitor with Bluetooth capabilities, so my Wahoo ticker that I have can also broadcast in Bluetooth, that would show up on the screen here. Uh, a Garmin Dual will do that as well. Right now I have the HRM Try on, so it does not broadcast in Bluetooth, uh, but that's okay because I can use Zwift as the carrier for all of my devices and then just use Trainer Road as the, um, the, the structured workout supplier here that's controlling my trainer. And then I can just save my workout to either my uh, Garmin head unit or to Zwift and then just use this as kind of the power backup. So once you're done here, you can go ahead and hit return to workout. And the only other thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take it out of full screen mode because it's gonna pretty much uh, compete with Zwift. So in this lower right hand corner, you have this little square that's got the four arrows pointing towards each other. This puts it in minimal mode. You can see that it makes it into a very narrow band here. It's got very simple readouts. It's gonna have the graph of your workout and what the progress will look like. Your progress along those individual intervals. It'll show you uh, your interval number, the uh, time, your heart rate if you have that connected, um, your, uh, your power, your cadence, and the overall time of the workout. So if I go ahead and I uh, maximize Zwift here in the background, I can place this somewhere where it might not be in my way. So me personally, I like to put along the bottom. I'll drag, I don't need these settings at the bottom so I can kind of drag them out of screen, place them down here, and I'll have my trainer road readout. And then I can still see most of my avatar and most of what I need to here. Uh, and I'm pretty much ready to ride. Otherwise, I can put it along the top and basically cover up those uh, that redundant data if you had it paired up redundantly uh, and, and just cover up if you don't need what's on top. But me personally, I would put it at the bottom so it's really not that obtrusive to uh, what you're doing. So you still see your graph, you see all your uh, readouts here. You can kind of dial this in uh, to, the, to your best uh, preferences here and then you've got uh, your progress along the workout and you're basically ready to ride. I'll go ahead and start pedaling so I can show you that these two are going to work in tandem. Basically the workout will start when I start pedaling and I will start moving through Zwift. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so we've got Trainer Road queued up and ready to go and Zwift is ready to go as well. Everything's all paired up and working and then when I start pedaling here, my avatar will start moving, my workout will start erg mode will kick in my work my timer is counting down here we go erg mode is kicking in to log me into that 95 uh, watts that it's expecting for my warm-up period you'll see the same readout on zwift actually i don't have the three second uh, averaging on zwift so it's maybe a watt or two off but it's showing basically the same power and i've got my coach's uh, text overlay right on the screen here so everything i want to see in trainer road is right on top of Zwift. And I can see most of my avatar and I'm ready to go. So now that we've figured out the Bluetooth and Amp Plus connection, the Dual Amp Plus is gonna be very similar, but as I mentioned, it is going to be in the reverse order and we need to open Trainer Road first. And the reason for that is Zwift is a bit of a connection hog. So Zwift, for whatever reason, will take both of those Amp Plus receivers by way of the dongles and will try to take exclusive control of both. I'm not sure why it does that, but the Trainer Road program does not do that. It will leave the other unused Ant Plus dongle for Zwift to use. So we will just need to make sure that each time you go into the workout, you open Trainer Road first. So I'll go ahead and hit workouts. I'll select the same Abbott workout here. Inside, load workout. And you can see how I have four devices pa paired here. And you can have my Garmin heart rate monitor, my Vector2 pe pedals, and then I have the Ant Plus and Bluetooth available here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, try to shut this off here. I'm gonna go ahead and just forget this device for the time being so we don't have uh, any confusion as to what's working here. So it's not paired right now on Bluetooth. It is only paired for your heart rate, 
my power meter. I also have this set to run cadence only, so there's no power conflicts. Just so I get the same data on both, I find that my power meter and my smart trainer are within a couple of watts of one another. So I'm just gonna use this for cadence for the sake of ease, and I'm gonna use my um, smart trainer for the erg mode and for the power transmission here. So I'm gonna go ahead and return to my workout here. I'll put this in the minimal mode as we did in the last step. And then just in the reverse order, I'll go ahead and I will open up Zwift here. And as you can see with Zwift connected here, it's still connecting to my controllable trainer. It's connecting to my heart rate monitor, my cadence, uh, as well as the controllable trainer down here. You can see in the upper left-hand corner that we are not connecting with, via Bluetooth. This is AMP Plus, so I am getting a duplicate connection. As with the last step, I'm going to make sure I turn my controllable trainer uh, off so that uh, we don't have Zwift trying to connect to my trainer. And we will go ahead, oh, we gotta move the trainer road overlay out of the way briefly. We will go ahead and we'll just use the same route. We'll go ahead and click ride. I'll set this overlay right where I want it to be. And there I am. We'll give you a quick little couple second ride just to show that everything is working and we should be good to go. All right, I'm gonna start pedaling here. And within a second or two, we should get transmission to Zwift and to trainer road. Got my warm up countdown, five, four, three, two, one. Wants me at 95 watts, erg mode kicking in here. And we'll dial into the right power. And as you can see yet again, we have very similar consistent power readings, one to the other, minus that three second averaging that I have turned off in Zwift. So there we are, we're all set up, same overlay, same instructions from coach, and I'm running Zwift in trainer road seamlessly at the same time. So as you can see, once you get that first time set up in your workflow, whether you're gonna use Bluetooth and open Swift first, or you're gonna use Ant Plus Dual and open up Trainer Road first, once you get into that habit or routine, you can see both of them work very easily, very seamlessly. It only takes a couple seconds to dial in uh, your display settings and put that overlay where you want it. And then you just get on and ride and everything starts automatically. And then obviously it would help to have a keyboard by your bike or your trainer to be able to manipulate or move things out of the way, pause, whatever you need to do. Uh, a couple of final thoughts about using Trainer Road and uh, Zwift together, some things that you might wanna consider, is if you're doing a low intensity or recovery ride, make sure that you're probably picking a flatter course just for your own peace of mind. You move through the world a little bit faster. It's something a little bit easier to look at because if you're doing zone one or zone two on a steep climb, you're gonna move pretty slowly and you're gonna get rather aggravated with your lack of progression through the world. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is this idea of the sticky draft. If you've never incurred it before on Zwift, uh, if you get kind of locked in behind another rider that might be at a similar power, even if it's a little bit lower, uh, Zwift will lock you in on that draft. So if you are doing a, uh, a ride in erg mode on trainer road and you get locked up behind somebody uh, who might be at a power and you just that aggravates you to look at one of the workarounds for something like that is to use a TT or triathlon bike uh, those will not draft in Zwift so if that would aggravate you to be stuck behind another rider and draft ad nauseum when you really just kind of want to be moving through the world with with lesser distractions or passing riders or letting riders pass you um, you can go ahead and use a TT or triathlon bike to go ahead and completely omit the drafting experience from your ride. In terms of stability, this is actually my first year of using this personally, but I've done some um, pretty substantial research into forums, as well as done a little bit of polling uh, on the Zwift Riders group on Facebook and other outlets. And it seems like most people have a pretty good experience if they have the equipment and the network connection to handle it. So that is to say, they don't see any more crashes in the program than they would see uh, in one program or the other uh, by itself, which is very minimal when you're using something on a PC or a Mac. Most of the crashes in Zwift uh, and in Trainer Road generally come from some kind of uh, Wi-Fi or network signal breakdown and not from the programs itself. Not that they can't crash, but it is rare in my experience with Zwift having it for several years. I have never seen an in-ride crash personally. Uh, I've only had maybe one or two startup crashes, probably because I was in full screen mode and I was bouncing between other things and I just made it upset. But uh, Trainer Road, I have not really seen any crashes either. So if you're worried about stability, 
It really doesn't seem to be a concern. I will uh, update with any feedback that I get as I continue to use this system, but I find it a, a great way to get more value out of both subscriptions so that I don't feel that I'm leaving anything on the table with either. So I can use Trainer Road as I want with the structured workouts and still get my value out of Zwift. And then when I wouldn't have used Trainer Road anyway, I'm still using Zwift and getting uh, all, all the bang out of my hard earned dollars for both subscriptions. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, experiences, please leave them in the comments section down below. If I left something out of this video that you need me to clarify, also leave that down below. Please hit that like button if you thought this video was helpful. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that little notification bell because I think that's just what people do now. You just hit the notification bells because we don't have enough notifications on our mobile devices, do we? Yeah, that's a little facetious, but hit it if you want to. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I very much appreciate each and every one of you, and I will catch you in the next one.